we're back again. We're back again. And five minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> it's Sarah and Mary Margaret. And we are here this time to take the information that we talked about in terms of uh, instructional support, and particularly concept development, and think about how to make it come to life in the classroom. It's easy to think abstractly, but let's think about concretely what it looks like. And we thought we'd start with the water table because most classrooms have a water table. Kids gravitate towards the right. water table. And so, and there's so much that kids can learn at the water table besides splashing each other and knowing <laughs> that, ooh, I, the rule is I don't dump the water table, <laughs> yes. right? Um, and so, but when kids are at the water table and they've got those containers mm -hmm. and they're pouring it from container to container, they're trying to figure out, well, if I've got this cup that's this size, Will the water fit into the smaller container, or will it fit into the bigger container? And if it's Which would be a nice example of a teacher noticing a, ch um, a child sort of trying things out, which right. is that um, creating piece, right? right? Planning, right. like, hmm. And so the teacher sees that um, and says, I noticed that the um, you're pouring water, yeah. and I see that one of them is getting or faster. Why do you yeah. think that is? So there's some classification, right. right? Or how many cups do you think it would take to fill up this big bowl, right. which yeah. would be prediction, right. right? So you're kind of playing that what if game with the yeah. child, yeah. that yeah. analysis yeah. and reasoning, and putting it together. Yeah. And maybe I put the water in the, in the table with the different size cylinders um, because I thought, well, I want them to understand that some containers might be short and wide and hold the same water as something, right. as something taller. So that mass and volume, yeah, that might be right. something that could be something that would transfer, translate for that child. Right. Right. And so we're asking those kind of questions to get them to try it out. Yeah. Um, you could integrate that talking about when they're pouring milk at mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. you know, for their lunch mm -hmm. or for their snack mm -hmm. and come back to like, remember at the water table, we had really big cups right. and it took a lot of water. How much water do you, or how much milk do you think we're going to be able to put in here? So, yeah. again, infusing that and connecting it to their real world. Right, right. And once they're beginning to make that connection about, oh, if I pour this big container into this little cup, it overflows, right. then you could provide some feedback around that. Right. right? right. So, exactly. what might you do if I'm pouring water and, like, oh, <laughs> Look, teacher, my cup has run yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. Well, and probably the first thing I do is, is when I saw that, I would say, "Well, why do you think that it went over?" And then, and, and then I would, and you know, if the child says, "I don't know," I would probably say, "Well, let's look at this size container versus that size so container." So you're scaffolding and putting. Yeah. Like so how hand. are they different? How are they the same? Oh, that one's bigger, and that one's smaller. smaller. Okay. So what does that mean if one's bigger and one's smaller? They're different sizes, and they hold different things. Exactly. So right. Exactly. And then, so, and then the teacher might say, right, exactly, and then provide more information. So we have different weights. Right. It weighs differently. One's right. heavier and one's lighter. And then all of a sudden, here comes language modeling. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. So the teacher might be describing that you're pouring and weight and volume now mm -hmm. become advanced language mm -hmm. in the context of mm -hmm. that conversation. And so the conversation is there, too. So in a kind of a quick way, we've really taken a short interaction at the water table and in... And infused, we built, we built on that moment, and we've yeah. infused um, aspects of right. each one of the dimensions right. of instructional support. And that's really our job as teachers mm -hmm. is to capture right um, the moment. Not, yeah, capture the moment and to build on the moment, and, and in truth, to, to create moments too. Exactly. Um, all of those things that, that, that we're doing, and children are going to learn so much more about mass and volume through that kind of activity than if we sit down and say, okay, children, here's what we're going to do, mm -hmm. and we demonstrate to them. Right. Because when we're at the water table, we're following their leads, they're doing it within the context of their natural daily play, and that's going to stick. And we're building our relationships by being proximal and by listening to what they have to say. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, instructional support's really important, but all of our dimensions, all of our domains really do fit together. Yeah. Um, but I think in closing, I guess, um, instructional support is really about getting a child to think out loud. And I have actually one more thing well, to say. Prediction. And then I think, prediction, prediction. oh yeah. No, predictively. Oh, predictively you have one more thing. <laughs> because, so when we think about misconception, misconceptions, one of the other misconceptions is that, is that it's in small groups or circle time it was when we do concept development. That's the concept development time. 
nonsense. We can do concept development all day long. Um, this example of the uh, play at the water table yeah, is, a, good is a good one. Yeah. All right, signing off. See you yeah. again.